the house. Look what we found. <laughs> Happy Sunday. Listen, nothing in life is free. Um, you gotta work for it. <laughs> Love each other. Basketball. Not even kidding, when I'm running 100 plus miles a week in the summertime doing vertical, it can be very difficult to do any extracurricular activities. So the fact that I can even move around pretty nimbly without, any, without too many aches and pains is a good sign that the body is so far holding up to the high volume. We're going to talk about 110 mile training week, but first we've got to play a little b-ball outside the school. Boom. Thank you, neighbors. Thank you. All right, here we go. Denver Broncos playing. We're playing basketball in the background, having a good time. I got my legs up, remember, resting, trying to elevate the legs, just stay off them. Um, I can still hold my ground though on a basketball court, right boys? Uh, so, here's the deal. Um, 110 miles this week. Well, the run is not done yet today. We'll see if I actually get it done. We will get it done. But, gonna hit 110 miles. It's a good solid week of training. High volume. I realize it's high volume. And I'm not saying you need to go out and run 110 miles to get ready for your marathon. I'm just communicating what I'm, what I'm doing in order to attempt my best at chasing down a 219 marathon in Houston for that OTQ, that Olympic trials qualifier, and how, and then in the studio, we're going to talk about why I'm running high volume and how the body is, like what does it actually feel like to run 110 miles in one week. So I'll explain all of that out there, and I'm working on my training log for the upcoming week. So I do not lay out every single workout at the beginning of the, of the training block. Rather, I lay out the general volume I want to hit. When I say volume, that means how many miles, how many kilometers I would like to be running, Let, emphasis on like to, meaning at the end of every week, every Sunday, I reevaluate, I sit here, and I just listen to the body. And I'm like, huh, how's the body feeling? And if I can still play basketball with my boys, I feel like I, the body's actually reacting pretty well. We'll go into more detail out in the studio, but I reevaluate how I'm feeling. And if I'm not feeling well, if I'm just feeling run down, beat up, I drop the volume for the next week or maybe cut a workout completely for the next week. So that's what I'm working on now here in the training log. Butter my bread. Hope you had a great week of training and I will get you the question of the day uh, out in the studio. So, mm, man, what a day. What a day. All right, here we go. Let's see here. This next week is going to be shoot, big as shoot, well. Shoot, 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 shoot. Boom. Good shot. Oh. Yeah. Score. All right, I'm feeling real warmed up, going out for 10 miles. I'm not going to film the run today, just going to get it done. See you in about 80 minutes. Shout out to Seth in Tennessee. Thank you, Seth, for sending this. Riot Roadrunners, awesome. I appreciate the singlet. It'll be, it was nice out today in Denver. Snow is definitely melting, so the, the dirt is opening up. But uh, anyway, I'll be wearing this a lot next summer. Okay, here we go. Shake time. You better believe it. Mm. Whoa. Absolutely delicious. Not bad. Every day it tastes just a little different. So I'm I'm testing the waters with these shakes, but it's it's getting there. It's getting there. And uh, we're going to the actually the kale. So it was a really healthy shake today because the kale was on its last leg. You know when you have a veggie that just needs to be eaten immediately or else it's gonna go bad. So the kale was on its last leg, so it was an extra. I put as much kale in as possible tonight and uh, just trying to recover, be smart, sleep well, sleep really well, eat well, in order to make sure the body is as happy as possible after 110 miles this week. Sure enough, I met the goal. I feel good about that. And when I communicate to you my volume, I am definitely, definitely, definitely not bragging, okay? What I'm trying to do is to 
show all of you, and especially everybody, everybody, but especially let's say high schoolers, college students, like the name of the game in aerobic endurance sports, aka running, patience is the name of the game. And consistency. My dad always said when I was in middle school, Seth, the more consistent you can be in your training, the more rewards you will reap later in your running career, okay? And now, at this point, how I feel right now, okay, real quick, niggles, let's talk about aches and pains, and then I wanna talk about how the body feels after 110 miles of marathon training. First of all, I had a little PF, little plantar fasciitis flare up about 14 days ago, right after Argentina. I took a couple days off of nothing, and it just flared up. I don't know if it was the cold weather, it just flared up just for like 48 hours, maybe a couple, maybe three days. I got on top of it, stretching, and it went away. So we're good, no PF. I have a niggle on the bottom of my right foot, right here, right below my, my pointer toe. And I think it is um, a bruise, a deep bruise. I've actually had it for a little while. It's about a two on the pain scale. And again, this is one of those niggles that I'm not worried about, but I'm just monitoring, okay? And I don't think it's, I may not go away until I take two weeks off, three weeks off. I just don't know. I'm putting ultrasound onto it, but that's another niggle. Niggle number three, okay, good news, my hip is good, all right? So that's good. It didn't react. In fact, I don't think I felt it at all during this past seven days. The week before I did. This week, good to go. My left knee is a little tight, my left knee, so I'm working on it. Um, I don't know if it's the cold. I don't know if it's the pavement and concrete. I will keep you posted on my left knee. Just a little tender, a little tight. And uh, again, I'm monitoring it close, but it's one of those niggles that I'm not overly worried about, but I just I gotta, be care gotta be careful with it. Um, so, how do I actually feel? First of all, aerobic training. I think the vertical gain that I sought out, and this is you know just connecting it to your running as well. If you're getting ready for uh, Boston or a big race in the summer, or maybe you're getting ready for a huge marathon like uh, nine months from now, I believe in aerobic training first before anaerobic. Why? When we're training consistently at our, in, in our, let's say, let's just roughly say 125 beats per minute uh, for our heart rate up to like 155 or maybe 150, right in that range approximately. Um, what's happening is with the more consistent you are, you're actually expanding the size of your heart and the stroke volume of your heart. So how much blood can your heart actually pump through your body? And then um, I actually am refreshing my, I'm reading some old textbooks from college about um, cardiovascular development and neuromuscular development. And um, I had kind of forgotten this, but the more consistent you do endurance sports, aerobic training, uh, your blood vessels are actually, the diameter of your blood vessels that deliver blood to your muscles are actually expand, uh, the diameter is increasing ever so, so slightly as well. So it's all happening during, the, during your aerobic exercise. Now, 110 miles the last week, it's a lot, I get it. Um, these, this past summer, seeking out Oh man, I, I'm, I'm a lot, a lot of vertical gain. I, right now, everybody, I don't want to get too excited, but let me just tell you, <laughs> I'm having a really difficult time running slower than 7.30 a mile right now. Like it's, and I'm not, I'm not trying to brag, I'm just trying to communicate like the, the base foundation. Remember a, that the, the pyramid, we talk about the pyramid in training, I love that aerobic base. All that aerobic base, training for Pikes Peak, the 300,000 feet of vertical gain, um, I, I'm very excited. I, I, and the fact that I'm not getting vertical gain right now, about 1,000 feet per week, rather than five to 8,000 feet per week, my legs are just singing it. They're just, they're just singing it. They're praising, like, my legs feel amazing. They are, I would say after 110 miles, I would put them, like excluding the niggles, like if the niggles weren't there, oh my goodness. But I mean, um, I'd say they're like at an eight and a half out of 10 right now. They just feel amazing. Cause I think that vertical gain has set me up for, um, just for feeling good right now because I can just go run flat and fast. So anyway, that's how I'm feeling. 
going in. I just want to communicate with all of you. That's how I'm feeling during this marathon training. I hope your marathon training or your ultra marathon training or your two mile training or your 800 meter training, whatever you're training for is going very, very well. And question of the day, here we go. What was, now this is, you might got to think back. What has been your highest volume of training ever? And we're not bragging. We're not bragging down in the comments. We're simply communicating and learning from each other. And what, how did your body react to that high volume of training? Was it good? Was it not so good? Was it even keel? Did you end up with an injury? Did you, did you end up setting a huge PR like a month later? What happened after your highest volume of training over a week or maybe over a month, if you want to, if you want to look at it a little, a little more zoomed out, that is okay as well. I've got some big training coming up this week, which means I got to go edit the vlog, get to bed. I love you all. Uh, the boys and I, we didn't break anything inside playing some hoops. Um, oh man, sometimes the best entertainment is free entertainment, right? Just uh, getting a little hoop out of the neighborhood, neighbor's trash. Can't beat that. Can't beat that, can you? So anyway, I love you all. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. That's my little reflection on high volume, 110 miles. Yes, I'm going to go up. I'm going to keep, I'm going to go up another step uh, this upcoming week. So I'll get you another update probably in seven days from now. Sound good? I love you all. We're going to toss it back on the right to aerobic engine training on the right. So why I train my aerobic engine first before adding anything else. That'll be on the right. And then on the left, we'll talk about uh, mileage as well. Another discussion that we had probably six or seven months ago. All right, there you go. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.